Hey folks, Bill here, Early Bird Video Productions, back with Mike. We got a couple mini quads. You guys have been seeing the last couple weeks, you've seen some Let's Fly videos with mini quads, and we've had a couple different ones. I originally bought this one from Ready to Fly Quads, and then we were up at Flight Test, and this X Hover was there. Uh, who was it was there with it? Stone uh, Blue Airlines. Yes, yeah, Stone Blue Airlines. And he said, well, I got this, and it's, it's built. It was already built. I just had to solder in the uh, motors to the ESCs and put the controller on it. And he had a, it wasn't that great of a deal. It was like I could have got it anywhere else, but it was right there. And uh, Mike got to looking at it, and he was <laughs> wanting to buy it, and there was three other guys standing behind him. And then he, he kind of turned around and said, I ain't going to get it. And I said, well, if you don't get it, I want it. And he said, well, you sell me yours? And I said, sure. So we swapped money real quick, and I ended up with an X over. So what I wanted to do is tell you guys a little bit about the differences. One, this one's carbon fiber. Uh I don't know that I would spend the extra money again. Really? I mean, this one flies really, really good. Yeah, I like it. I'm real happy with it. Yeah, it's 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 locked in. Now, this is the Flip 1.5 board. This is also using uh, Paul's motors from Ready Fly Quads. These are 2300s, uh, 2204s. Yep. 2204s, 16s, 2300s. These have the same numbers as far as specifications, but these are the Sunny Sky motors. And I had this talk with Mike. I was like, I'm going to be really upset if I get home and my $500 quad doesn't have as much motor as my $150 quad did, uh, power-wise. And I was surprised. The little motors had good power. Yeah. Uh, but this is the second set of Sunny Skies on this frame. I think it's because the can is actually the same size as far as where the magnet right. structure goes. This, this motor, just a little bit bigger can, but where the actual magnets are, they're, yeah. they're pretty close same size. So I think that's why they're kind of spot, spot right. on pair with each other as far as So, so what Mike's talking about is the actual height of this motor, because this motor to me looks a lot bigger and beefier than this one did. And then after looking at it and looking at the motors, it looks like there's a lot of air in the top of this one. So if you look here, you can actually see there's a big difference between the Sunny Sky motors from the top of the windings to the top of the motor than they are on Paul's motor. So they relatively look like the exact same size as far as this one. These are just a little bit taller. Power-wise and stuff, I really like these. Again, I said this is the second set of Sunny Skies, and here's a set of Paul's motors that I'm going to be putting on this. Um, I'm just not happy with these Sunny Sky motors. I know a lot of people have a lot of good luck with these things. And I've had some crashes. You guys have seen them. Uh, but I crashed this thing, too. Well, you remember... A couple of weeks ago, I flipped this one upside down from about, what, 100 feet, and it still flies fine. And what, what it's doing, you guys are not going to be able to see this on there. I'll get the camera over here and see, but uh, there's a little slop in these things. And these are brand new motors. This one here is actually the oldest one on here. There's a lot of play right there. And that gives vibration, and that causes it not to be really locked in. It doesn't feel like this thing is locked in at all right now with these motors with that slop in them. And when I first put the Sunny Skies on there, it was great. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to try Paul's. Um, these are his new motors. These are actually prototype motors, so they don't say ready to fly quads on it, but, but these do. So uh, I was happy with these, so I'm going to try them. So if you guys are looking at the X ever, I wouldn't hesitate to buy the uh, motors from Paul. Uh, I really like the carbon fiber frame, but you're paying for a lot of looks. Yeah. Um, I mean, this frame is what, $19? Yeah. And this is $150. I, I just, I don't know that I would step out and pay that a difference again. It's really nice when you, your buddies walk up and you got the bling yeah, carbon fiber. Yeah, you got the bling carbon fiber uh, frame. But fun wise, they really, they seem like they fly really close to the same. Now, this has the CC3D board on it. And I really like the programming open pilot software. Yeah. I like it a lot better than I like the mission planner software for the Adreno stuff and the multi read stuff. And they work both work well. Just that software requires a little more reading yeah. and a little more knowledge to get in there to what you really want to do. Where this one has got, you know, sliders where it actually comes up and says if you want it snappy or not. It seems intuitive. You can slide that slider back and forth and you can adjust it. Um, yeah, these you actually have to punch numbers in on on, on the programming for the Adreno. Oh, yeah, man. And, and there's numbers on this one too, but there's a slider bar. Yeah. So that that slider bar just if you the first time you ever miss with, I think the Open Pilot software is easier to use. Yeah. So if I were looking to buy a board, I would get the CC3D over the Flip. Um, 
simply because of that software. Now, if you're used to the software, the flip's a lot cheaper. I mean, it's half as, half as much as this thing. Yeah. Uh, Ready to Fly Quads is carrying the CC3Ds now. Uh, I don't know if he's got any cases. I actually got this really cool case. I'll zoom in here and see if you can see it. But it's, uh, it's from Stone Blue Airlines, and I, I really like that cool-looking little acrylic, uh, clear acrylic case. Um, and the Flip uh, 1.5, I couldn't find a case, and I hard-mounted it using nylon um, standoffs. Yeah, and this thing flies great. I really, really liked it. I, I was telling Mike after I paid for this, I was, I was kind of down the dumps before I even flew it, thinking, boy, if this thing don't do better, I'm going to be disappointed. Uh, but I'm, I'm really happy with both of them. They were, they were great. Um, but I don't know that I would step out and spend $150 on this frame versus buying that frame. It would be neat if these folks would just make this X an H. Yeah. With the same style, I think it would totally offset going out and giving your money for that one. Is it as tough? I don't know. I've crashed this one, crashed that one. I haven't broke either one yet. I know it's going to happen. The only thing that I, that I don't like about this frame is the standoffs, the feet, the landing gear. Yeah. They're, they're, you're, you're supposed to glue them in on the bottom, and they won't stay on. I don't care. I put epoxy on them. First time I crashed it, I lost one. So, you know, that's the only thing I don't like about them. As you can see, I have totally removed mine. So I just landed on this, actually on the standoffs now. And it seems to work really yeah, well. It, it and a fine. after he did that, I was like, shoot, that's what I would have done. Because when I flew at flight test, I actually lost a leg uh, then. And we were, uh, luckily, uh, someone there gave us one. Uh, Buddy RC was there and gave, gave us one to put back on it. So I didn't think about that any longer. But we pulled those off last weekend. Mike was flying. He was trying to get something to prop one leg up while he was flying. And, <laughs> and finally, we were just like, pull those off, man. He pulled them off, and, it, and it's fine like that. So I, I, that that's not really a huge problem to me because I think you don't even need those. So if I no. were building on I wouldn't even put them on. No, I wouldn't even bother. Uh, I've seen folks put uh, ping pong balls on them. I may do that well, just to get it up, get off, it up the off the grass ground a little just bit. A little bit. And I even thought about it. it would be really cool if you could run an LED up in here and put it inside the ping pong balls. That would be kind of cool, yeah, too. So. I'll typically just set it on top of a cooler and, yeah. and fly it off the cooler, and sometimes I'll try to land it on the cooler. Yeah. Sometimes it don't always go successfully, but yeah. that's what I try to do. But looking at, you know, if you look at this one, it's got standoffs on the bottom, much like we've got now, because I drilled those for that flip board. But, uh, so, I, you know, I don't even see the legs thing as an issue. Yeah. I wouldn't even put them on there. So don't bother. Just leave them on. Um, so that's the quads. I mean, they both fly great. You've seen a lot of video. The next thing I want to talk about is these antennas. Mike was up there, and he, he, it was his fault. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, oh, these antennas are supposed to be great. And who are the guys there? I know it's IB crazy, but what's yeah. their aerial systems? Aerial. I'm getting aerial this all wrong. But it's sponsored by my MasterCard. So if I get this wrong, I'm not, I'm not upsetting them. Um, but I bought this set. It came with the transmitter antenna and the receiver antenna, and I was really surprised. Um, I, I bought some antennas just like this that Mike had got me to get. Now, these are a lot cheaper. I think it was around $18 or $19 yeah. for a pair, where these are 65 bucks for a pair. Uh, so they are a lot more expensive. But I went out flying around in the back back here, and... Um, I started losing a little bit of signal. Now, I didn't go out, but it was flicking around, and I said, well, I want to try it on these. My first thought was I wasn't going to put the expensive antennas on this. I was going to put them on my GPS, you know, no crash quad, so I didn't tear up my $65 antenna. But I wanted to try it, and I put it on there, and I flew around, and it's so much better. Yeah. I was just so impressed by it. So now I'm probably going to buy more of these for, for the others, but I, you can get just the receiver in, so I don't need another transmitter. But I really like that. And again, that was uh, Video Aerial Systems. We hope that's right. So uh, they seem like really nice guys. I actually, one of these got kind of dropped. And somebody stepped on it. I don't know, it's probably me. Uh, some kid, Mike said, but it was probably me. And Mike went back up to the booth and they put it on their analyzer and he tweaked it, tweaked it. And he said, oh, there's still noise in it. Throwed it away and gave me another one. So it was really nice to yeah. for the guy to take care of me when something happened like there was an accident. Um, yeah, I think they're pretty good about standing behind it. their products. Well, where they should be, and you know, anytime you got a company that's going to charge a little bit more, generally 
that little bit more is quality and it's also customer service. Yeah. If, if this one's not quite right, guess what? You spend $18. That's, that, that's about it. Um, but these do work pretty good. We got these off eBay uh, on some store. So look on eBay if you want to try out the $18 ones. And, and they They're work better okay. Better than the dipole. Yeah. You know I mean? Yeah. Uh, but I was surprised how good those worked. I, I didn't think they would be. I was like, I was skeptical. But at any rate, we really like those. As far as hardware we're using, I'm going to stick all that down there in the description. Uh, so you kind of know what we use. If you want to go to Ready to Fly Quads and order your stuff, you can. Or uh, Stone Blue Airlines has the X Hover stuff. Uh, they also have the Sunny Sky Motors. Uh, maybe they'll get Paul's Motors. I know they know the guy from Ready to Fly Quads, so maybe they can get with him. You know, I, I called him and told him these motors, the bearings are wearing out. And he said, well, if you've had a few, few crashes, you know, they might do it. And I said, well, okay. So that was one motor. But I went ahead and ordered a complete set. And since I did that, seven or eight flights later, I've got uh, already starting to get play in these. And even this one, I just put on there. It's got some play in it. Now, this is the, one of the original motors. No play at all. I, I don't know. The bearings going out, yeah. bending shaft, something either in the crash or... I'm not sure. I'm looking for bearings, so if anybody guys know where to get bearings for these, I'd like to get them and replace them for these motors. And I've crashed this one several times. And what you've seen a couple of weeks ago, I flipped it. I was trying to flip it, and I was successful in my flip, but I also crashed. If that makes any sense. <laughs> and it, it was from a pretty high distance, and it didn't hurt it at all. Yeah, I'm really impressed with his motors, and they're uh, I think they're actually a couple dollars cheaper than these if i and remember the correctly guy. i think they're around 18 or 19 dollars and these are 22 25 dollars depending on where you find them um so anyway that's i'm going to put that whole list down in there uh, all of this on everything on here i got from ready to fly quads and then everything on this one right now at the moment i got from jeremiah at stone blue airlines uh less the antenna and transmitter i already had the transmitters we're both using, we're both using. Uh, these are the 32 channel uh, Fox Tech 5.8. And they're 600 milliwatts. Yep, 600 milliwatts. And, and they work pretty good and they're cheap. I think they're around 70 bucks, so you can get two of these for the price of a Fat Shark. And these are 32 channels, and they operate on the Fat Shark uh, frequencies and the, the uh, Fox Tech channels. Yeah, and that, boss cam that channel. really came in handy at Flight Fest. Mm -hmm. What? Everybody was flying on the, you know, the standard fat shark channels, and I didn't have any issues because I was flying on one of the other channels that's not a typical fat shark channel. So that I never had any FPV issues the whole time I was there all week. Yeah. So that was kind of beneficial. Other yeah. than, you know, I had there were some people, you know, at, on the side saying, "What channel are you on? What channel are you on?" I was like, no, "I'm not on a fat shark channel." Sorry. <laughs> so you can't watch. So you can't watch unless yeah. you go over to my monitor. So yeah. Um one thing you gotta watch on these things is it's 32 channels and they go from like, uh, is it channel 10 band, 10, 11, 12, all the way up to 18 and then they jump up to 20, 30, 40 and those don't really, they jump through frequencies. It's actually a channel number in here but for instance channel 43 is actually the same as channel 17 or so close that yeah. they collide big time. Uh, I had a friend of mine, Greg was out flying, was on 17 and I was on like 41 and I switched to 43 and just blew him out of the water. He said, well, I'm looking at myself and I'm like, oh no. So you got to watch that. But there is a chart. So look at the chart um, on Fox Tech's website. They've got that. You can get that, get that down, kind of figure out what bands that your receivers operate in uh, so that we can try not to step on each other's toes when there's a bunch of us flying. Last weekend at the field that we were out there, there was like four of us in goggles. Yeah. Sitting there with four of us flying FPV chasing each other. It was a lot of fun. Can't wait to do that again when it ain't so hot. So at any rate, that's this. Um, we have some more flight reviews on this thing coming soon. Just some Let's Fly stuff. Uh, got another video coming real soon on the uh, Reptile we bought from Buddy RC. It's a uh, TBS Discovery clone, I guess. Yep. It's a 500 size. So that's coming up next week. And stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Please rate, subscribe, and we'll see you next time on Whirly Bird Video. Thank you.